Welcome to the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teaching you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. Is the Word working mightily in you today? I hope so. I'm Charles Capps. Welcome to the Concepts of Faith broadcast where we're talking about the Solomon concept and how it reveals the prophetic timeline of the future. Now, that's an, it's an interesting study. I hope you've been with us. If you haven't, well, we have some material available to you. But first of all, I want us to go to John's Gospel, the 14th chapter, and listen to the words of Jesus. He said, Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. You know, I've looked at that a few times and said, well, I won't have heart trouble because Jesus said, don't let your heart be troubled. <laughs> and, uh, and Jesus said, as you believe, so be it done unto you. I know it's referring to different trouble, but we can apply it in our lives. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. Were not so, I would have told you. He says, I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Now this is very plain that Jesus plans to come back and appear and catch away the church, the believers, to the place which he calls the Father's house. And we are to be with him where he is. He's not coming to be with us where we are until... We come back after the tribulation period. We will return with him, as in Revelation 19, and we will come back to the earth and rule and reign with him for 1,000 years. But there are people that say, well, you know, the rapture's not going to take place. We're going to get everything uh, ready down here. Then Jesus is going to come rule and reign. Well, the, they miss a step in it. They miss the prophetic utterances of Jesus and many other things in the uh, Old Testament scriptures, because this is important. He said, I go and prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Now let's go to the Old Testament. See, we're talking about the Solomon concept. Now let me give it to you for some of you that hadn't been on the other broadcast or haven't tuned in. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, Solomon said, The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be, and the thing that is done is that which shall be done. He's talking about things that happened in the, in, in the Old Testament, and in fact in the New Testament as well. Of course, he didn't know that at that time. But it's recorded in this book, the Bible, that reveals the future. And he says, There is nothing new under the sun. It has already been of old time which was before us. So what is he saying? He's saying that God reveals these things through events in days past. He reveals the future. And what goes around comes around. You've heard that saying, and uh, it, it's true because we, we have followed this in the last few programs and have seen how that events of the past reveal what is about to happen and some things that, that are very interesting, especially in this day and age. <clears throat> So, the, go with me to Second Chronicles. Now, remember Jesus said, In my Father's house are many mansions. I go and prepare a place for you. So there was a place to be prepared. Now, how many of you know, I'm sure most of you, that uh, prophecy has more than one fulfillment? Uh, I believe it was uh, Peter that said that no prophecy of the Scriptures is any private interpretation. Now, there's several ways you could look at that, but I personally believe that what he's talking about is that uh, the prophecy that comes forth can be good for, the, for one time and also for another time and another time, such as the uh, where God told uh, Moses or, or Noah said uh, man's days should be 120 years. Well, he's talking about days of dominion. And there was judgment that came after 120 years from the time that seemingly that God said that. But there's coming another judgment at the end of 120 Jubilee years. So it's prophetic. 
So let's go to Second Chronicles five where, or three, where it tells about the house of the Lord. So, then Solomon began to build the house of the Lord in Jerusalem and Mount Moriah. This reveals that it's called the house of the Lord. Now, wasn't that what Jesus said in my Father's house? Wouldn't that be considered the house of the Lord? So this is a physical building. It is a temple. It is a worship place, but it's called the house of the Lord. So and Mount Moriah. Now, Mount Moriah was the place that David bought Arnan's thrashing floor. It was on top of the mountain. And uh, he bought that thrashing floor for 600 shekels of gold. And we've mentioned that in some of the other broadcasts, how it relates to God's people, the number 600 in different ways. But let's come on down to verse 3. He said, Now these are the things wherein Solomon was instructed to build the house of God, the length by cubits after the first measure was three score cubits, that's 60 cubits, and the breadth was 20 cubits. The porch in front of the house, the length was according to the breadth of the house, 20 cubits, and the height was 120 cubits. Now, he's giving you numbers that are associated with the event of the house of the Lord being built. So we, the 120 comes up again. That's interesting because he said man's days shall be 120 years, uh, 120 times 50, uh, you're talking about jubilees, then you're talking about 6,000. We're coming up with the numbers that this seems to give us some great insight. So as we watch here now, let's, let's add these as, as it has given them. And here we have 60 by 20, uh, the porch. Now, if we do these in square feet, if we do these in square feet, somebody said multiply them together. Okay, that's 60 by 20 is 1,200 square feet. The porch was 20 by 20, that's 400 square feet. And the, uh, uh, the other portion, the most holy house, that was 20 by 20. Now, that adds up to 2,000 square feet. Is that a prophetic number or what? 2,000 years of the church age. And, uh, you know, it just fits that the house of the Lord would be finished and ready. Now, someone said, well, let's add them together then. <clears throat> so when we add these numbers together the way it gives them, uh, not counting the height of the porch, it comes up to 120 cubits. This, this structure is 120 cubits. Now, that, that's an interesting number in the light of the things that we've seen through the Solomon concept. Now, let's come over to verse 8 where it says, He made the most holy house, the length whereof was according to the breadth of the house, 20 cubits, and the breadth thereof, 20 cubits. Now, here's the most holy house, which was the holiest of holies. Now, you realize this structure sets inside the 120 cubic structure. It's not added to it. It sets inside it. So if we have a cubic, uh, the structure of 120 cubic that represents 120 jubilees before the house of the Lord is finished, then what does this 20 by 20 cubic structure represent? 20 by 20, that would be... Uh, uh, 40, 40 cubits. You suppose it could be 40 jubilees of the church age? The church age is 2,000 years long, or 40 jubilees. So here again, you have numbers that emphatically fit what we seem to be seeing in the Scriptures and what the Apostle Paul taught and what, what was we found in Genesis, the first chapter, where it says it was all finished after six days, or 6,000 years by double reference. So we followed that timeline from Genesis chapter 1 over to the second chapter of Genesis where it says that it was finished after six days and then the seventh day God rested, which represents the seventh millennium. 
And Solomon concept says the thing that hath been is that which shall be. So here we find Jesus saying, and my father's house are many mansions, but he said, I go to prepare a place for you. It just means abodes. I go and prepare a place for you. Well, this seems to be representative here of the father's house because it's called the house of God, or the, uh, the house of the Lord. So the measurements then are prophetic because 2,000 years of the church age is 20 jubilees, uh, 40 jubilees, excuse me. Now, let's, let's notice what it says. And he made the most holy house length according to the breadth, 20, uh, and they're off 20 cubits, and they overlaid it with fine gold amounting to 600 talents. <laughs> now, isn't that interesting? You remember I said that the number 600 is associated with God's people in some way or another, uh, in many places anyway, there's a pattern to it through the scriptures, not on every occasion, uh, certainly, but <coughs> on a, uh, pardon me, <coughs> a major part of them, you will find that it, it, it is, it fits. So here, it's overlaid with 100 tal uh, 600 talents of fine gold. Now the next verse says, the weight of nails was 50 shekels of gold nails. Now, you know, this gets, it, it gets amusing before you get through all this. When you see all these things, numbers, how God associated these numbers with what's being done to outline or confirm the revelation of what we've seen from Genesis on through and what was taught in the Word of God, even in the New Testament, some of the things. <clears throat> so what we have here is a composite drawing by using numbers to confirm the revelation in that this 120 cubic structure is held together with 50 shekels of gold nails. Now, I, I know I'm repeating myself, but that's the way we remember and learn. The 6,000 years of the earth lease period, which uh, God gave man dominion, and uh, if, if you were not on the uh, hearing the broadcast when we talked about it or was tuned in, uh, we read the 12th chapter of Roman, uh, 12th chapter of uh, Mark, where he tells us about the earthlies. Jesus tells us about the earthlies. I'm not time to go in here, but he said, uh, a man planted a vineyard and leased it out, let it out to the husband and so on. He is describing the earthlies. And then he talks about taking it back. God's going to take back control of this earth when the earth lease expires and there are going to be major changes. So here we have all of this laid out and we, it seems to be associated with the 120th Jubilee. But now, remember, we're talking about determined time, not, not our calendar time, determined time. God determines the time of prophetic fulfillment. He can put it on hold. He can put it on delay. For hundreds or thousands of years, he can and turn the clock back on. That's what he did with the 70th week of Daniel, you remember. There's 69 of those weeks went by, and it was prophesied it would be 70 weeks. That's uh, weeks of years, 490 years. And the reason they went into Babylonian captivity was because they wouldn't let the land lay out the way God told them to. So he said the land is going to receive its Sabbath. He said the Sabbath was for the land, and that's probably the reason that today a farmland uh, that raises vegetables don't have as many minerals in it because they've depleted the mineral supply of the land, and there's something about letting it lay out that replenishes the mineral supply. But we, <laughs> we'll just say that in passing. So here we have the weight of nails was 50 shekels of gold nails. The structure was 120 cubits. If you multiply those numbers together, you come up with 6,000. We found it uh, time and time again from Genesis 1 up through here. And uh, so it becomes a very interesting study. And, and like I said on one of the other broadcasts, that Noah, when he entered into the ark, he was 600 years old. So that had to do with the righteous, all the righteous of the earth, and he was caught out, lifted up in the ark uh, above the destruction that came on the wicked of the world. 
And that's going to happen again, not the flood, but there is going to be destruction coming on the wicked world after the righteous are taken out. Now let's come over to chapter 5 of 2 Chronicles. Verse 1 says, Thus all the work that Solomon made for the house of the Lord was finished. And so the house of the Lord finished here. Now come down here to uh, <coughs> verse 5 and it says, They brought up the ark and the tabernacle of the congregation, all the holy vessels, and, and were in the tabernacle. These did the priests and the Levites brought up. In this verse right here in a what we call an ELS skip sequence, in the original Hebrew is spelled out the word jubilee. Now that's interesting in the light of all the things we've said about this. In fact, this word jubilee is found three or four times in this chapter alone. So God is, Im, has embedded in the original Hebrew the information to let you know this has to do with the jubilee. Now when we come over to uh, verse 12, well, let's back at verse 11. came to pass that when the priests were come out of the holy place, for all the priests that were present were sanctified and did not then wait by course. Also the Levites, which were the singers, and all of them, Asaph of Heman, Jeduthun, and with their sons and their brethren, being arrayed in white linen, having cymbals, psalteries, and harps, stood at the east end of the altar, and with them, now get this, with them, a hundred and twenty priests sounding with trumpets. <laughs> now, here it is again. I mean, God is saying, if you didn't get it in all these other hundred and twenty numbers, look how this is associated. They're celebrating the house of the Lord being perfected, finished. And we have a hundred and twenty priests blowing a hundred and twenty trumpets, Obviously, it must be the 120th Jubilee when the house of the Lord is finished and ready for us. <laughs> now, remember, we're talking about determined time because I know some of you adding up, well, well, we've already been 120 Jubilees. Well, we're talking about determined time. Much like a ball game, it's determined time. There's time outs, time delays, and God is the official timekeeper, just like the referee and, and the scoreboard thing. There's official timekeeper and scorekeeper. So this sets the stage for what I call the Solomon concept that reveals when our place in the Father's house is ready. It's ready at the end of 120 jubilees of determined time. Now, we, we, we see this, but sometimes it's hard for people to wrap their mind around it, that God could embed things in the Scriptures and, and bring these things forth uh, with confirmation of numbers that fit the exact prophetic profile of events that happened in days past revealing the future. But this is exactly what's happening in the Word of God. Now let's read further. came to pass... As, as they were, the trumpeters and singers were all of one and made one sound to be, be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they had lifted up their voices with the trumpets and cymbals and the instruments of music, praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, his mercy endureth forever. Then the house was filled with a cloud, so that the house, uh, even the house of the Lord. Now the glory of God came down on this place when they celebrated the house of the Lord being finished. There's no doubt in my mind this is a prophetic profile through the Solomon concept revealing what's going to happen at the end of 120 jubilees of determined time or 6,000 years of determined time that there is going to be the glory of God is going to be poured out upon the church like it's never been before in all of church history. I believe there's going to be more people saved and born into the kingdom of God between now and the time that Jesus appears than has happened in all of the 2,000 years of the church age up till now. This seems to indicate that. Now let's read verse 14. 
so that the priest could not stand to minister for reason of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. <laughs> you can't get it much plainer than that. I mean, how could you say it any plainer than that? The glory of the Lord will fill the house of God. What did the Apostle Paul say in, in Colossians 1, 27? Christ in you is the hope of glory. The glory of God is coming upon the church and the believers before we leave this planet. I tell you, when we leave here, the world is going to know we have been here. You haven't seen anything yet. But here is a what I call the Solomon concept, revealing what will transpire when the earth lease expires and when the ha that reveals the house of the Lord is finished. Well, now, someone might say, well, you just, I'm just not sure that's, that's what it means. Well, let's go over a few chapters here and just look at what's embedded in the original Hebrew. If we come over to chapter 6, beginning with verse 38 and going down through the third verse in chapter 7, in an ELS equidistance letter sequencing, it's kind of like rungs, rungs on a ladder, you skip ever so many letters every time, and it spells Jubilee 120. Now, is that a coincidence? I think not. Jubilee 120. Now, if you come, come on over then and uh, to the uh, seventh chapter. Now, if, if, if this is true, what, what we're seeing in here, then there ought to be something about seven-year period or something in here that would follow this because we know there's going to be a, uh, when we go to heaven, when we're caught up, when the church is caught up to heaven for seven years, we're going to have a feast for seven years up there. It's going to be the marriage supper of the Lamb, and, and we're going to have a feast on the manna from heaven. I mean, the, the revelation and things that, of how to rule and reign with Christ. So let's look at the ver eight, eighth verse of the seventh chapter of Second Chronicles. Also, the same time, Solomon kept a feast seven days. Now, here's a seven-day feast. Now, remember, the 70th week of Daniel is a week of years. And once you pass the 6,000th year of determined time or 120 jubilees of determined time, there's a period of time in there that a day represents a year, not a 1,000 years. It represents a year. It's 70th week of Daniel. So here we have a feast for seven years. That is, the, it says seven days, but it's, it is a prophetic profile of the seven-year feast we'll have in heaven. And it follows right after the 120th Jubilee. Then from verse 9 down through verse 16, here again we find Jubilee 120 embedded in the original Hebrew in a 73 skip sequence. Jubilee 120. Now, folks, I don't believe that that is a coincidence. These things were put here for the last generation. We are the last generation. Now, let's move over to the 8th chapter. And notice the wording here. At verse uh, 16, it said, Now all the work that Solomon prepared at the day of the foundation of the house of the Lord and until it was finished, so the house of the Lord was perfected. Now, notice he used the word perfected. Now, what did Paul say in Ephesians 4? He said there's a fivefold ministry for the perfecting of the saints till we all come to the unity of the faith, to the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the fullness of the stature of Christ. In other words, the church comes to perfection. The house of the Lord was perfected. Now, if this is a prophetic profile, we ought to be able to find something about a seven-year period then of the tribulation. So let's look at chapter 9. And when the queen of Sheba heard the fame of Solomon, she came to prove him. The first person that came to prove Solomon was Sheba, the queen of Sheba. 
You know what Sheba means? Sheba means seven. So there's your seven that would represent the seven years of tribulation. Now, is that a coincidence? I think not. And here's another reason. When she came, verse 9 says, she gave the king 120 talents of gold. <laughs> I'll tell you, I just get amused at this and how simple God has laid it out in the Word of God so we can't miss it. It, it is the Solomon concept revealing the future in a very unique way. And uh, you can call it coincidence if you want to, but when it's embedded in the Hebrew to reveal these things, it is worth taking notice of. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to uh, talk about the tape offer here. <clears throat> we're offering the Solomon Concept Update. Now, this is uh, offer number 2254. It's called the Solomon Concept Update. Two audio cassettes in an album, or we also have it on CD. Uh, we can get it CD or uh, cassette for $12 plus $4 postage and handling. But, but when you order, please specify whether you want the cassette or the CDs. There's two CDs in an album, or the two cassettes in an album. Uh, and, or if you want both, just say both, and it, of course, it'd be $24 for both. But uh, specify. Now that we have a 800 number, it's 1-877-396-9400. And also we have the uh, website, which is www.charlescaps.com. Now you can order it from the website. Uh, you might get it in a little quicker and get you uh, tapes quicker, but it's available to you. And uh, this deals with the Solomon concept that we've been talking about right here on the last two broadcasts, well, actually several broadcasts, uh, and it goes further than what we've got so far. You, you get some things that we haven't even got into yet. But uh, it's amazing when you sit down and, and go through the Scripture and what the Word says and how the numbers are used in association with the Word to confirm the revelation of the Word of the Old Testament and New Testament. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's exciting. So uh, until next time, this is Charles Capps reminding you that the devil is defeated, God is exalted, and Jesus is coming soon. Are you ready? If you're not, you better make provisions to get ready because Jesus is coming soon. To order a copy of today's show or any product offered on this program, call 1-877-396-9400 or visit our website at caps.tv where you can order downloads of our MP3 teachings, ebooks, and watch other programs on demand. This broadcast has been sponsored by Caps Ministries and is dedicated to helping you put the Word of God to work in the everyday circumstances of your life. <laughs>